put on this computer. Right. Hi, welcome to the official BKB podcast today. My guest is the man everybody loves to hate, the pantomime villain himself. It's a man who, by the way, is probably the original pantomime villain, more disliked than Donald Trump, many would say, more hated than Jesse James, perhaps. But he puts bums on seats with a five and six record in BKB. I've no idea what will happen over the next 40 minutes or so. He's from Long Island, New York. It's the one and only Eric Blood Axe. Olson. Eric, how are you? I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta cor- I gotta correct you on that record. So no. you say five and five. Technically it's six and six and one because I was fighting in England before it was called BKB trademark. Well, it used uh, to correct. be called correct. UB I'm called. taking the BKB record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just I just always put that out there because before BKB, it was UB bad. U- and UB I bad. was fighting correct. even then. So yes. Okay. Well, now, I knew it wouldn't be long before you started (laughs) correcting me. But let's just talk about, I mean, you mentioned there, it's, I suppose, the last fight against Simon Sinkovich, you were disqualified for Mm headbutting. He gets the win. (laughs) Yeah. But you're disqualified. Do you get the loss? I mean, I guess if you want to be, look, in my opinion, if a fight like that happens, there's no win, there's no loss, it's a DQ. The people who dislike me say, oh, any win's a win. Then the people who like me say, well, it's not a real win. Personally speaking, it I mean, I didn't beat him. I didn't lose to him. I just kind of abused him and got kicked out of the fucking fight. Uh, is what it is. So it's, it's a loss by a DQ. Yeah, I know that they say that. Like if you, you know, when you watch combat sports, there'll be like six wins, six losses, one draw or one of those losses by way of disqualification because it matters, you know. It's not like somebody's knocking you out. There's a big difference between that. But it is what it is, and it happened, and that's that. Am I wrong in thinking that may that disqualification, because a lot of fighters don't see it as a loss, but see it as a disqualification. Could that have been your tactic in the fight? At no, the I just got angry. I just wasn't thinking clear. I was in a rage over something that happened. And I just, I, I, when I get really angry, I'm not the best at controlling myself. My, my original thought process was because he did something with the referee agreeing with him, I was going to, I wanted to break his eye socket, like the bone into his eye and like cause a problem for him. Um, and it was just there. I didn't plan on that headbutt into the second round. I just saw an opportunity and I'm an opportunist when I'm going to fight with somebody. I took it. What what started the whole situation off, because if you noticed before, I actually touched hands with him in the ring. Yeah. What started the situation off was we were boxing back and forth. I thought it was a pretty decent round. Nobody was really, nobody looked like Lomachenko. So, you know, it was a bare knuckle boxing match. So I was giving, taking, controlling, pacing. He was hitting me with some stuff. I was hitting him with jabs. Um, and then what ended up making me get really mad was I hit him with a jab to his body and his foot slipped out of the ring. And when that happened, in my opinion, if you punch me and my body goes outside of the ring because your punch made me, that's a standing count. The ref didn't give him a standing count. And then when he got up, he stands up. I let him stand up. He faced me. The ref never said stop ever. So I hit him with a one, two, bum, bum. And when I hit him with the one, two, the ref jumped in the way like that. So I thought I was getting the standing count. The ref turns to me and says, I'm warning you. And I said, what? I have it on video. I said, the fuck you mean you're warning me? For what? Punching him in his face? I go to my corner. They get the doctor up there. They're giving Simon a full fucking EKG, a brain scan. They're giving him an eye exam. They're giving him a hearing exam. I punched you in the face in a bare knuckle boxing match. He's like this on the ropes. He's he looks like he's on a ship that's in like hot rough seas. He's doing the Axel Rose sway from Sweet Child of Mine like that, all bent over like he's throwing up. So I'm sitting here, and and he's telling the doctor he poked me in the eye. I didn't poke you in the eye. I punched you in your face. I punched him here, and then the second shot was to his temple. So. When the referee warned me for that and didn't give me what I thought was rightfully my count and Simon played into it, I just went crazy. Because, you know, if that had happened to me, 
I would have waved the doctor away. I would have said, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. Let's fight. Let's fight. I wouldn't have sat there going like he lost his contact. So that's when I started to short circuit and I got fucking viciously angry. And I was like, if this guy wants to lie about eye injuries, I'm going to try to break his eye socket. So a piece of his bone goes into his fucking eye. Fuck you. And then, you know, when we were fighting in close, he grabbed the back of my head and I head butted him like, you know, BKB has been very clear that you're not allowed to grab the head and punch. If you want to fight me, we can. But if we're boxing, we can't. So that's the first headbutt I threw. And then by that point, I was just unraveled. I was just so fucking mad. Mm. And that's what happened. So you're going to rematch. And I've got to tell you, in all my time with BKB, and I've been there since BKB won, there haven't been many more fights more eagerly anticipated than this one. Yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. He's excited for it. I think other people are. Uh, I'm not going to fucking headbutt him again. <laughs> This is you, a better for me. You can clinch and hit. Yeah, I can clinch and hit, you know, um, and it's three minute rounds. And so and I'm standing out of 10, by the way. Standing out, you're out of 10. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's three minute rounds. So I get longer rounds. I like longer fights personally because I really don't start moving until like the second round or so. Um, when I did a lot of Muay Thai fights, I really wake up in like the second and third. In MMA, I wake up around towards the end of the first. Um, I prefer for a longer fight. So uh, it's it's five three-minute rounds. So that's cool with me. And then, yeah, I can clench. I can hold. I can hit. But more to the point, he can hold and he can hit. So if he does that, cool. What got me mad in BKB was that he faked his fucking stupid little eye and poke. He says I poked him in the eye. And then he's trying to hug me. You know, like, come on, get, get out of here. And I don't know what was up with that ref. You know, um, in the moment, people see certain things and he saw that. So that was it. And that's that. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And, you know, me and Simon have went from knowing each other and being cool to really disliking each other now. Um, he says, listen, he says quite clearly he wants you to come to the fight, ready to fight. No bullshit. None of the cheating. Just get on with it. I'll punch him in the mouth at the way in if he's not careful. I spit in Carl's face at the way and I'll do the same to him. You know, I, I'm not, yeah, I don't give a fuck what he says. I'll beat that motherfucker both up in the ring and outside of the ring. Uh, I, don't, I don't like him. I don't got no respect for him. And that's that. You know, he, he had his moment in the ring with me where yeah. he could have looked at the doctor and said, get away from me. I'm fine. Let's fight. And he's sitting there going like that. And that's when I lost it. And since then, we've exchanged insults. You know, he keeps saying he was out boxing me. I mean, what? It was a two minute round. We went back and forth. And I'm the one who technically knocked you down twice. Uh, you didn't look like Lomachenko. I, I don't know what you're talking about, Simon. But, you know, that's part of the anti-Eric campaign of all these people who dislike me and fans. There's, um, a, lot them, and he, There's uh, a lot of them. Good. Fuck them. There can be a lot of them, but they're always far away. There's never any of them in my proximity. I don't get people talking shit or insulting me to my face. It never happens, even in this fucking town that I own. The people, listen, you be, you, you're one of the most experienced fighters we've got, right? Yeah. You should be loved and respected, but you're not. You know what it is? It's fans. And this isn't it just me. I go on Facebook and I see it like on Tyson Fury fights or Earl Spence fights or any boxing or any MMA, you see these videos come up on your, your feed and then you see the comments and the comments are like, nobody's commenting about what they should have done, how bad they are. If they're a gatekeeper, you know, these are people that have never done anything on the level of a Conor McGregor or Khabib mega made off or uh, Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua. And they're talking. So picture for me, who's not on those guys level, the talking I get because people seem to think because they're fans, they have a right. And I don't really care if you do or you don't. If you insult me or, or say something about me and you do it close enough, I'm going to fuck you and hit you. Um, you know, and that's just the way it goes is fans can say what they want behind the comfort of their screen. Let them. I mean, they're not, you know, it's like here. I was walking to the gym the other day on my broken leg and I cut a kid drive by and flipped me off. I told him, pull, pull over. Nobody pulls over. So that's as big and bad as you want to go. You see the yank, you don't like him. You tell him to go fuck himself. He tells you, pull over. You keep driving. Cool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ooh, you, you showed me. Let's just talk about you. You injured your broken leg in the cage. 
uh, you you broke your leg in the cage. Is that going to affect you for the Trigon? Nah. So I was be I was fighting Leo Pla. I kicked. I broke my own leg kicking. Oh, right. Um, and I I broke my fibula, which is you know you have your tibia yep. and then you have the outside bone. I broke the outside bone, and I continued to fight and fuck him up until it gave out. He hit me in it a bunch, and and I threw kicks and he blocked it. The first fifteen days I couldn't walk. It was bad. I'm walking now. I'm doing the Stairmaster. I'm boxing. I'm sparring. Am I moving as slick as I used to? No, because it's still broken. But can I move? Yes. Can I punch? Yes. Should you and be fighting like if it's like that? Should you be fighting? I don't. I, listen, when I was in jail, you, 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 you fight. If you got a fucking wound, you fight. As far as I'm concerned, if I can get out of bed and I can do, if I can go to the gym and move, I can fight. This will make for a more exciting fight, technically because I won't be fucking moving my head half as much as I usually do. Yeah. So I, I plan on actually standing there and, and literally just trading. Um, I can move still. Yeah, I'm fine. It's, it's not a weight bearing bone. The healing time is four to six weeks for it to mend. This fights at seven weeks. I heal pretty quick. And uh, I've fought with injuries before. Listen, you're never going to go into a fight a hundred percent unless you're fighting people that are like, the fishmonger at Asda, like all these clowns around here do and back in Long Island. They fight a guy with like five back surgeries that works pushing the shopping carts in at fucking Walmart or Asda. And then they go in, they beat him and they act like they just knocked out Derek Ch Chisora or something. You know, if you're fighting real opponents and, you know, Simon's tough. He, he can't box, but he can fight. He's tough. You know, you're never going to go in 100 percent, but you're going to go in mentally focused and physically as focused as you can and just fight. And that's that. So are you... Is that affect? But is it this broken leg? Is it affected your camp? Technically, it's probably made me better because I slowed down. Um, I got rest that I never take. I slowed down like heavily, heavily dependent back on my jab, heavily, heavily dependent on my counter jab, and less hooks because I can get a little hook crazy sometimes. So more technically, more technical. From how it's been going on the pads and sparring, um, I'm actually technically moving better. So I, I think I'm fine. Like I said, I'm going to have it wrapped up, taped up in like a sleeve, a compression sleeve. Yeah. So I probably I'm going to go in all fights now with like wraps and compression sleeves on my limbs. <laughs> let me let me ask you, because I've, I've, I've wanted to ask you this and I'm going to ask it. Why do you appear? Why do you why do you revel in being one of the most hated fighters in BKB history? Or is it all part no. of the game? No, it's no game to me. I'm me. Like, you know, I I didn't know what you were saying for a while, pantomime. I actually looked that up. It's not an act. It's not a put on. It's just me. Like I tell everybody, there are certain topics you wouldn't care what I think. Certain topics you'd be totally like blown away. Like that's not cool or that's cool. When it comes to fighting, you get a very f closed circuit. Uh fans and fighters that think you're supposed to act and be a certain way right so since i go outside of that doctrine that they all have and they all they, they all do it just for fucking likes they're not really serious and since i don't partake in it and i mock them of it then um they have something to say about it from far away i used to be an ice cream man i went to cosmetology school i used to work in salons doing hair and makeup on fashion shows wow. while i was Muay Thai kickboxing with Colbin Loco Chemai Se Tang, who moved over from Thailand to um, Manhattan. You know, so for all the people that I've beaten in England and America and all over the globe, you got beat up by a hairdresser and an ice cream man. Just run that by me again. Hairdressing and makeup. Yeah, I did pretty good. Yeah, because when I got out of prison. Are you, are you having me at it? Are you winding me up? No, I can send you pictures after. Like fashion shows and shit, yeah. <laughs> uh, I had hair at the time when I, when I did it. Um, <laughs> what was it but i was young but the point of what i'm telling you is like that goes outside of the spectrum of what people expect of a fighter like you know there's this thing where you see fighters do they have kids and they put their kids names on their wrist wraps and then they post it on social media they are doing that because they want to get attention look at me look at me look give me attention give me positive attention first off if you're getting punched in your fucking shit it doesn't matter whose name is on your wrist wraps. It could be your fucking grandfather. It could be your dog's name. It don't matter. 
So to me, I think that's stupid. I think that's trying to get attention, right? And I think it's dumb. So I make fun of people who do that. If you put your kids' names on your wrist straps, you're in a little attention-seeking diva. Um, I think that's stupid. That doesn't have any, any, any way the fight goes. Um, no, but it could, it, surely it could be, though, a man's love for his children, surely. What does that have to do with physical violence in a ring, though? They inspire you. Your kids can inspire you, Eric. They can yeah, inspire you can... to kill somebody, maybe. Like, like for me, like, I have kids, and yeah. I tell you what, as nuts as I was back in the day, I'll do something hideous just because I don't want to have a bad rep. Like, if I want to be that motherfucker that when my daughter grows up and my kids grow up and someone talks about their dad, they'll be like, yo, your dad was a psychopath. Your dad removed so-and-so's fucking limbs because he looked at him wrong. That's cool to me. But as far as fighting in a ring, in a cage... The last thing on my mind is my kids. I, I'm 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 thinking about that stretcher on the side of the ring. I'm not leaving on that motherfucker. You are. When I fight, I'm thinking about nothing or you. Totally and focused I'm, on your opponent. Yeah, that's why I like it so much because I don't got to think about shit. But my point of what I'm saying is like these fighters, they do these things like these posts and these things and they hate me because I don't agree with it. I don't really give a fuck. You know, I didn't come here to make friends fighting. No, there's some people I'm very cool with from fighting, yes. And there's some people I'm very not cool with from fighting. I, I also have more fights than everybody. And also, my fights are actual fights. I fight real people. You won't find two and three guys on my record with losing records. I've seen some of these people over here, the people that they're bragging about beating, and I'm literally blown away. Like, you're, you're proud of that? You beat a guy that had two wins, coming off three surgeries with 15 losses, you knocked him out. He's four weight classes out of what he was 10 years ago. And you're bragging about that? And then all their fans and everyone else is like, oh, good job, good job. Good job for what? Beating up the handicap at the senior citizen? Like, what are you talking about? So, you know, like, I call people out on it. And, yeah. and, and also with me, because I fought everywhere. Um, Poland, uh, Sweden, England, Wales, Thailand, America, all over America. What are you going to do? What are you going to try to flex on me? And say, well, you've never done, I've done everything. I've done everything 10 times more than you've done. I fought ex-UFC guys that were 2-0 and in the UFC that got kicked out of the UFC because their wrestling was so good. And all they did was hold people. Ian Stevens, they claim that he held people. He beat me in 70 seconds. Motherfucker's almost an Olympic Division One wrestler. I fought him. You didn't fight him. You're fighting the ass, the fucking... Uh, fishmonger so like people people can't pull rank on me i fought in bellator i fought in Wator, i fought in king of the streets i fought in thailand i fought on bkb Trailblazer. i fight everywhere you, i still eric, eric, listen nobody would doubt you are a fighting man there that there is no question and no doubt you're a fighting man um let's just finish off on the fight against simon first so a few things just want to get out firstly what are you expecting from him and whatever he does, will you now change your tactics and your fight plan? Nah, like, uh, I already know. Like, I got a blueprint on Simon. He doesn't hit half as hard as he thinks he does. And he's not half as slick as he thinks he is. And he doesn't have any footwork. He, he could, Listen, I know people are going to say, oh, he's talking shit because he's not. Simon can fucking knock your average guy out. Simon can fight, but he can't box. You know, there was a moment in the fight in our first one in the first like 20 seconds i put myself in the corner and i just did this and i let him hit me a bunch it, because i just was testing the waters punched me a few times up in my head and face and i was like all right cool that's like when i fought carl hobley everyone's like the giant slayer sure maybe carl at 110 kilograms can throw a big overhand but at 100 kilograms he had no pull no power no nothing that you know so well, simon's gonna simon's What's he going to do? Punch me? I, he doesn't really got any fucking... I ain't worried about it. Uh, as far as I go, I'm going to be more aggressive this time. I'm just going to cut the ring off on him. It's a triangle. <laughs> so, you know, just put him in the ropes in the corner and just fight. Will, um, that, what, will the trigon suit you then? I don't know. I've never fought in a triangle before. So I don't really think about that stuff, but I do like... I get in the ring and I walk back. I think like one step, like before I fight, I go, I get in the ring, I get into my stance and I take half a step. I take a quarter step and then I take a big step. And I count how many steps each one takes me to get to the ropes because I've been in a fight and I take three quarter steps. I know I'm near the rope, right? I just think about that. So, um, 
No, nah, I'm not really focused. Everyone's focused on the fucking Trigon, the Trigon. I, it's a fight. It could be in Whole Foods or Asda or Tesco. Uh, um, it's whatever to me. Um, it'll be cool. And I think, you know, the, the BYB uses a referee that used to referee my kickboxing fights back in like 2010. Right. Wayne Spinola. And and I'm a big fan of his because he would let us fight back in the day. And I've seen he still refs and he still lets people fight. So I'm excited if he's there just because I ain't seen Wayne since 2010 either because it's 2022. That's what cool. Is it, what is it about fighting? You know, I mean, if you were a boxer, you're the, but you're all sorts of fighting. You just love fighting. Yeah, it's exciting. It's fun. You get an adrenaline rush behind it. Um, as you got bigger, as I've gotten bigger, it becomes more of a production. Like, I don't say anything for effect. I don't talk just to talk. Everything I say, I mean when I say it. Um, and if things I say bother people, I mean that too. Um, it's fun to be a, like a thorn in the side of people that I don't like. That's fun to me. Uh, and ultimately, it's just, um, you know, you don't have to think about anything when you fight. It's just in the moment, I guess, so to speak, right? It's exciting. You I'm not gonna, there's, there's no deep motivation. Like, I'm not going to say something crazy or something boring. It's just cool. Uh, I think people... Are- I can get that. Do you think, a lot of people think, do you think you overstep the mark when you become personal about people and their families, for example, no. or no. no respect for the country you're living in? No. I don't like America. Oh, I, I don't, I, I don't, <laughs> you know, like, I I don't, I wear the American flag to piss off people in other countries when I'm fighting there that don't like me because I'm American. The only reason I'll fuck somebody up if they start talking shit about America, the only reason is because they're talking shit about me and they're insulting me. I don't like America. I have no fucking, I can't stand the fucking politics of it. And I went to prison in America and everything, like the, the court and the people who own that country, then fuck them. Um, as far as personal, I come from like prison and jail and youth lockup where people, you talk shit, they stab you, you cut each other, you burn each other with boiling pot noodle. Um, if I can stab you, then how easy is it for me to fucking talk shit about you? You know, and as far as the kids and the family thing go, it's not my first go to. You know what that is? And I've said this a hundred times. I get messages from people at two in the morning. Someone's drunk, pissed off their head on a bunch of fucking Stella's. And they're telling me I suck. They're telling me they could knock me out. And I look at their page and their whole page is them with kids watching SpongeBob and Peppa Pig. And that's great. Cool. Good for you. But you're a family guy. I'm a barbarian of epic proportions. You Stop messaging me like you're a serial killer. And if you think you are, here's my information. Come. I mean, if you're going to take the time to write me the bullshit that I get, then come do something. And then I and then and then I and then I'll send them a picture of their kid or I'll post a picture of them because every picture is of them and their children. And I'll say, oh, this is a tough guy. And then they're like, oh, you're posting pictures of my kid. Well, you posted pictures of your kid. I'm just posting the picture of what I'm looking at. You don't want it? Don't 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 fuck with me. So are you saying then if anybody's going to insult you, you'd rather do it face to face? Yeah. What's the point of talking? There's no point of talking. I'm not a fucking telemarketer. I don't want to talk. Like you know, if I'm out in, in Tesco and me and you have a problem over fucking the last pork chop, one of us will say, you know what, take it. It ain't that important. Or we're going to fucking battle over it like it's 13, 12 and we're nights. But what are we going to sit there and two grown men arguing about? Like, I'd rather just say to you at that point, fuck you, enjoy, keep it pushing and move. What, what am I going to get out of arguing with you besides just n- nothing? I'd rather just get physical and violent behind it. Or nothing. So, you know, if you don't like me, good, fine. Do something about it. Was there and, ever and a time me a message on Facebook isn't doing something about it? Was there ever a time in your life when you were not like this? So no, I know you said you went to prison. Was that at a young age and what did you go for? Um prison that time, well, jail, 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 you know. I went to prison when I was twenty two for arson and weapons possession, because I carry weapons all the time. And I blew up some shit in the middle of the night with gasoline. And the person that I did it with and for was wearing a wire on me. So I went to prison. But no, I mean, I've been pretty confrontational my whole life. You know, back to when I could last four or five years old, I was getting into fucking rumbles on my cul-de-sac where we lived in a 
court, country green court, all the other kids would come out, you know, you just that's what kids do. You establish your fucking presence. I'm going to come out. You're going to come out. Your brother's going to come out. He's going to come out. He thinks he's cool. He thinks he's tough. He thinks he's scary. So let's fight about it. The winner gets to decide what's up, motherfucker. And that's just the way it's always been. Um, I, I, that's that. So, I mean, but I'm not, I don't consider myself a bully because I go at anybody. You know, I, it, technically speaking, I'll let somebody slide if, if they're like, I have one rule I won't do, one rule. I won't make fun of people or pick on somebody who's disabled. I, I don't do that, um, no matter how mad I get. That I won't, I won't insult you, your kids, or say something about your family if someone has Down syndrome or something like that. That's off limits to me. I don't feel good about doing that. But, um, you know, if you're somebody who mouths off to me, it's not my problem if you ain't a pro fighter. I get people all the time talking this shit to me. Oh, I'm not a pro. Well, then don't talk shit to a pro fighter. Leave me alone. Don't say, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all, or I'll, you, you could get yourself fucking absolutely slaughtered. I, I mean, you are, you, you, I said at the start, you, you put bums on seats and you do, you know, and that is a rare talent for somebody, you know, you put bums on seats, people want to come and see you, even if they don't like you, they want to come and see you. And that's an invaluable asset for any company. Yeah, well, you know what it is, is I can fight and, and I'm not going to sit here and be modest and say I can't. Like I said from the beginning, I'm the, I'm not as good as Lomachenko. I couldn't cut it as a real professional boxer, but I've got a lot of fucking professional fights in a multitude of sports. I got a winning record in kickboxing, um, winning record in gloved boxing. My losing record in professional MMA is quite literally against ex-UFC alumni who... Yeah. The you ain't beating them up. You, you, you're fighting who you fight, but go down fighting. Um, with that being said, you know, um, so not only can I fight, but you know you're going to have a fight. I'm not one of these guys who's going to break his face or break his hand or even break his leg and quit. I broke my leg and he kicked me in it. And I fell down and then I out wrestled him and I got up and I fought for another two minutes. Like, and I kicked and he blocked it after I and, and it shook me to my core. I'm not going to give up. It's going to be fucking aggressive and violent. And I can actually move like I, my face isn't that fucked up from <laughs> 12 bare knuckle boxing matches in the home of bare knuckle boxing. Um, and if it's one thing the English can do, it's bare knuckle box. This is where the sport started. That's why I like to do it here. I think I've commentated on most of your fights. And the one thing that and I remember saying this to Robin Reed that stood out for me was. You don't really concern yourself or worry about pain or getting hurt. No. Yeah. I mean, I've had a lot of pain in life, like physical shit, like injuries. And look, if you're going to be worried about pain and getting hurt and fighting, don't fight. Yeah. If you're going to worry about, oh, I can't run that far, don't fucking play football, soccer. But, you know, if you're going to worry about getting wet and I, I don't want to drown, don't swim. It's not, I, I don't think there are many fighters that would sit there and say, oh, I'm worried about getting hurt. Well, if you're worried about getting hurt, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. You know, the best quality a fighter can have and the stupidest quality is to think they could beat anybody. And that is something I have. If I'm matched with you, like I can watch a fight with anybody and I could say, yo, that guy's a pro. He'd kill me. But if you gave me an opportunity to fight him somewhere in my brain, I would come up with the idea that I could beat him. Always, always, you always believe you can beat anybody. Always, if we're matched to fight, yes. So, uh, and and every fighter should have that. Or what's the point of doing it? You know, what's the point of saying I'm only this good but not this good? What I mean, was it? You, then? you were a fighter, and and as I said, people dislike you, and I think sometimes that masks over some of the technical qualities you have. Of course, yeah. You know, but but you you did. You are the sort that. You managed to 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 fight dirty in, in a fight with no rules. I mean, well, <laughs> how the, uh, the, the, that that see that and, and and I take that as a compliment. But as far as fighting dirty goes in a fight with no rules, so there's no rules, so nothing's off limits. And before I gouged his fucking eyes half out of his head, he punched me in the base of my skull about twenty times. So the counter argument to that, I mean, I still was going to if I. It, the, he was still going to get gouged and he was about to get his nose bitten off too. The only reason I didn't is because I had my mouthpiece in and I was tired. 
and spitting it out. I just wanted to take a deep breath before I did. And they stopped it. But, um, you know, when I went down, cause I tripped and he hit me as I tripped and I grabbed his leg right before I scooped him and slammed him. He punched me like 20 times at the base of my neck. And I put my hand there and I love it when people say, Oh, the eye gouge was dirty. Hey, okay, cool. How it's a fight with no rules. You know how many people's eyes is I've gouged in fights in jails and prisons, people I've bitten in the street and in jails and prison. It's what you do. I'm not being carried off on that stretcher. You are. I'm 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 being handcuffed and I'm being led away by the fucking authorities to be questioned with blood all over me. You're being carried out on the stretcher. I'm stabbing you. I'm burning you. I'm slicing you before you do it to me. This isn't my first rodeo. I've been in places where I've seen people have arguments and they hesitate and they get a cut across their face. I've seen people get stabbed in the stomach and their intestines come out. I've seen people get hit with weights and they start convulsing. This is somebody who probably could have beat the other motherfucker off of a petty argument and they end up in an infirmary or who knows, I don't know what happens to them after, but being around that, I, that's not going to be me. I've been cut before in the middle of fights, but you're not going to get the jump on me. If we even, if I even think me and you have any tension, you get within my arm space where I'm hitting you. And if I have a weapon on me, I'm going to use it on you. Uh, so I, that's just the way it goes. Like, yeah, yeah. is what it is. I saw, I think I saw somewhere you, you, you used to deal drugs. Is that true? Yeah, I was heavily involved with that. And people don't like that. And that's not like... I don't. Fucking... I mean, I'm one of them that w would find that abhorrent. Oh, yeah. I probably killed thousands of people, realistically. I didn't deal drugs. I dealt like Oxycontin, like hardcore hair amounts of heroin. And guess what? I needed to eat. My family needed money. I got out of prison. There was no job hiring me. So in America, right, if you go to prison, it's called a, it's called a prison, a correctional facility. I get out of prison... I go to get a job. Guess what? Nobody will hire you because you've been to prison. So I did my prison time. I did my jail time. Three years. I got out. Nobody will hire Eric. Why not? Oh, you've been to prison. Yeah, I've been to prison. I did my jail time. So that means I can't ever work a day in my motherfucking life again. So at the time, you don't know it because you're not from America. There was a pan, there was an epidemic, let's call it, of something called oxycodone, which was synthetic heroin that the government was manufacturing, they give it to you or if you have an injury. Um, an 80 milligram pill, you sell for $80. A 30 milligram pill, you throw, sell for $30. And it got to the point where it was targeting the white upper middle class and rich neighborhoods, right? But what would happen was you'd get these fallouts of these people, would they become addicted to it and then they couldn't get it anymore. So they'd go get heroin then. And at the time, I don't do drugs, I never have. Um, at the time, I had an ability to get scripts, and I knew people who were selling scripts. Rob them. Rob him. Rob him. Rob him. What are you going to go to? Tell on me for robbing your fucking drugs? And they do. They do try that. They do try that. Prove it. And one thing leads to the next, and you're in a scenario now where this is what your life is, and you're doing it, and you're making money. But guess what? I don't have any of that money left. I did what I did for my fucking, you know, I helped out somewhat with my family. And I bought a lot of sushi dinners and a lot of other shit that I no longer fucking have. And that's that. Uh, it, maybe if somebody had hired me, I wouldn't have. Maybe I would have been greedy enough that I would have. I can't answer that question. I can only speak about this situation. Uh, and then the other one was drug running, where like you'd give me a brick of Coke and it would be boxed up and I would drive it up to Boston. And I would exchange it with whoever and they'd give me the money i'd count it and i'd drive it back to my boy and he'd give me a percentage for that but guess what if i get pulled over in america that's life interstate drug trafficking i drove from new york to boston with fucking something in my car i shouldn't have you get pulled over for that you're looking at 20 to 40 Oof. and you're doing 20 to 40 but guess what i need fucking 10 percent of what it is i need that fucking five six whatever grand you're going to give me and that's that Wow. We're nearly at the end. I just wanted to just just two things, I suppose. For me, I think underneath, it looks to me, having known you some time, that there's really a nice guy trying to get out of here. Well, no, he's not trying to get out. Listen, I said this to everybody. You know what you get with me. Me and you are cool, Tom. Yeah. If we weren't cool, you'd know it. And I'd know it from you, too. But I'm not like. I can just say it the best way I know. I'm not a sneak thief. 
Like, I'm not that guy who pretends to be your friend while reaching in your wallet. I'm not going to try to, like, be cool with you one minute and badmouth you. No. If we don't like each other and I really don't like you, I might sit outside your house and try to shoot you in your face. Or I might we just bump into each other and start fighting. But if I like you and we're cool with each other, even if we don't talk to each other all day long, uh, we're cool. Like, I got nothing bad to say. Like, it's a very black and white, left or right thing. If we are good, we are good. And if we are not good, we are not good. And too many people, they live in that gray area. I have no time for that gray area. Um, and, and, and by extension of that, if me and you were ever really cool and we have a falling out, what... I'm not going to sit there and badmouth you out of the fact that we were once boys, you know, but I still might bust your fucking head if I see you, but that's between me and you. It's not between everybody else. It ain't East End or East Enders for everybody to watch. You know, I, I, I what you, it's, I'm very easy person to deal with because you know, go down road A, you get road A, you go down road B, you get road B. Just stick to one of them. Don't try this fucking interdimensional jumping because you'll end up in the fucking vortex. Just finally, a message for Simon Sinkovich. Simon, fucking message for Simon. Okay, um, you're in England. It's got free health care. Lucky you, motherfucker. The NHS will take care of you. They'll stitch you up. They'll fix you real nice. And um, yeah, you ain't gonna, you're not going to have to spend any money. I don't know how it is over in Norway or Poland where you're from. But over here, when you get hurt, the NHS will cover the bill for free. Well, not free on the taxpayer's money. So that's that's nice. Eric, it's uh, it's always fascinating. I've interviewed lots of people all over the world, and I always find it fascinating. But um, I can't wait for it. I'm looking forward to uh, October nineteenth. Me too. For oh, October sixteenth. To... No, October sixteenth. Correct. Yeah. Byb the London Brawl, which is, Thank, oh, seems yeah, like it was made up, for you. Uh, thanks, thanks for Byb too. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. Thanks very much indeed, Eric Olson, talking to Later. BKB's official podcast. Bye bye.